The first few baby steps are about, you know, that intensity and it's just like, oh, I gotta go, I gotta go. But then once you get out of that, it's just like wide open space and you get to breathe and you feel that ease of financial peace. For some people like me, debt can feel like an incredible weight on your shoulders. After carrying that weight for a while, there comes a time when you say, I am done with this. On our debt-free living segment today, we're going to interview Jade Warshaw from Ramsey Solutions. Jade and her husband, Sam, became debt-free after paying off $460,000 of debt in less than eight years. Today, we're going to learn how they accomplished this family financial goal and what they're doing with their money now. Welcome to the show, Jade. Hey, thanks for having me, Andy. What's going on? Oh, man, this is great. You and I have known each other for a couple of years now. I'm really glad to have you on the show and talk about your incredible story that's going to motivate a lot of people, I think. So let's talk about your original motivation. Why did you want to become debt-free in the first place? Well, you know, it's funny. I always say we didn't have a choice. When you have that much debt, Andy, you, you cannot live. There is no semblance of a life when you have half a million dollars of debt. So that was a big, a big factor of it. And two, you know, I grew up in a house where money was a struggle. I know what that feels like on the kids. I know what that does to a marriage. And uh, we were just determined uh, to have a different outcome. Yeah, absolutely. Well, what type of debt was this? What was 400? How do you accumulate 460,000? (laughs) <laughs> well, you know, it was mostly consumer debt. Uh, by far, 90% of it was consumer debt. My husband did have a small townhouse that he went into uh, as an investment with his mom. I think it was 100000 But uh, 280000 of it was student loans, Andy, if you can believe that. Of course, we had the credit card debt, 20000 in credit card debt, and the two vehicles that we couldn't afford. So definitely what I would say normal in some ways. I know a lot of folks don't have necessarily $280,000 in student loans. But we see that number, it's creeping up higher and higher for most Americans. So it's a lot. Absolutely. Was there a moment that you and Sam, uh, something hit you and just said, we got to make a change? What happened? What happened was we moved. We got married and the first year of our marriage, you know, ignorance is bliss, right? You're, you haven't really combined everything yet. You're just enjoying each other. And uh, we, as as we started combining money and uh, we had an opportunity to move to South Florida and uh, there's something about a move that you start you know, writing everything down and seeing what you have and taking inventory of it. And uh, that combined with the fact that our student loans were starting to become due, it was just a recipe for enlightenment and also disaster. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, so what did you guys do to start making some changes at that point? Yeah, you know, I say all the time, when you have that kind of debt, it's easy to blame a lot of people, right? You can blame the student loan industry, you can blame your parents, you can blame your high school because it's like, oh, we didn't learn this in high school. If only we had learned how to budget in high school. And so we went through that where you're just blaming everybody. But then we we hit this point where it's like, okay, you cannot blame your way to a better life. You've got to start making changes. And so we did. I remembered a guy named Dave Ramsey and I remembered hearing him on the radio. And so I told my husband, I said, there's this guy, Dave Ramsey. I think he can help us. And so we went over to Barnes and Noble and we picked up the book, The Total Money Makeover. We picked up the workbook for him and we started working through it and was like, okay, we need to submit to this plan. This is the our way has not been working. And so we need to find another way. And that's where it all started. And we started submitting to that plan. And before you know it, we we're starting to make headway with that debt. Yeah. Well, I, I also was, I'm very familiar with that plan as it helped me uh, and my wife get out of debt as well. Thank you. Shout out to Dave. Uh, yeah. qu- uh, question with that. Obviously there's two levers you can pull during that process, the increase in the income part or decrease in the expenses. Did you do both? Did you do one more than the other? Talk to us about that. Yeah, I think for most people, it's a little bit of both. And for us, it was mostly on the income because when we started, my husband and I were both musicians looking, you know, when you're a musician, it's hard. You're starting out, you're gigging, you're trying to figure out what your actual career is going to be. So when we started, we were only making an income of about 30,000. And knowing that we had all of that debt, we knew immediately that we needed to increase our income. And so at first it looked like a lot of supplemental work. You know, I used to, I sold cupcakes at one point. My husband was training dogs. I was working at a vinyl t- and lettering place. So anything we could do to get our income up, of course, we sold everything in our house, Andy. At one point, we had no furniture in our house. Anything we could do to make income, increase our income. But then our focus shifted to, okay, long term, because I don't want to be baking cupcakes for the rest of my life. I don't want to be, you know, side hustling for the rest of my life. And so then we focused on how to really 
translate our skills into a business of our own. And that's really when things started taking off is when our, our, our personal business started taking off. And so we were able to throw more money to that debt snowball quicker. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah. So yeah. was it the accumulation of the side hustles and the supplementary work where you said, well, actually, I could see myself doing this specifically more in order to make more money? Or were you guys already having another business to begin with? Well, I heard somebody say early on, if you want to be effective in leadership, you have to learn how to multiply and duplicate yourself. And that really stuck with me. And as an entertainer, I said to myself, what does that look like? Because I can only earn so much money. I can only do so many gigs. I can only go so many places and perform. So what does that look like? And for us, it meant let's do a talent agency. Let's get as many people in the doors as possible and let's send them out to do the work that we don't want to do. And uh, for us, that's what it looked like. And yeah, we were able to multiply not only ourselves, but also multiply our income. And I think that's what it's about. When it comes to side hustling, I always suggest for people to find things that are already related to their current skill set, things they already know how to do. They already enjoy doing and they're already very good at doing it's probably something that they're already um, in that area and they can find a service to offer there yeah and then figuring it out how to scale without uh burning yourself out right i mean it sounds That's right. like you can only produce so many gigs i, I see you do a, a mad whitney houston you can only you could do the whitney houston so many <laughs> times before you got to get somebody yeah. else to to help out, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You definitely have to start thinking long term. But, uh, you know, it is a lot of sac- You touched on the fact that it's a lot of work, it's a lot of sacrifice. And you're right. You can only sustain that for so long, which is why speed is so important when you're trying to get out of debt. You've got to do what it takes to pay off that debt as quickly as possible because no one wants to live scorched earth, you know, for a decade. No one wants yeah. to do that. I mean, for us, seven and a half years was about, that was about it. But, you know, most people are able to get out of debt within 12 to 24 months. And so that's what the numbers tell us. Yeah, I think this is a delicate balance, though, because you guys have this uh, beautiful talent of music. And I fear that sometimes when people are like, okay, well, I need to make more money. Let me just lean into the thing that I'm good at or that, or that I like to do almost as enjoyment or a hobby. But then you push so hard that you might burn yourself out. Did you guys get to a point of burnout with some of the things that you used to enjoy? And how did you deal with that? That's a really good question. I would say that there were moments that it felt close to burnout, but I think those are the times where you have to connect back to why am I doing this? You know, what what's the end game? And I say all the time, you behave like you believe. So if you believe in what that end goal is, if you believe you accomplish it, you can't accomplish it, then that's really what pushes you through those times where it's like, oh my God, I'm tired. Can't I just, you know, can I just phone this one in or can I just call in sick or, you know, all those moments, you've really got to connect back to that why. You've got to connect back to what was the reason that we set out to do this to begin with. And if you believe that that's worth it, you will continue through those moments. That's great. And I understand that um, as you're talking about this, uh, you and Sam seem to be uh, great partners in that aspect. Were there any tips or hacks that you guys had as a couple that made this process easier. Yeah. I mean, the first one I would say is you got to combine your finances. You know, I've been reading the statistics on that and it's interesting. I found that only 43% of married people combine their finances, which might sound like a lot to some people, but in the end, I feel like, man, that's actually not a whole lot considering the benefit that we know comes from combining finances. I read a stat that said that couples that combine their finances build wealth four times faster. And part of that is because they're more likely to purchase a home together, right? And then it says that they've build more trust. And overall, those couples are happier. And that's the verbiage that it used. And I thought, man, that's that's really interesting. If more people knew that, I think that they would dive in and share their finances together because, you know, you're communicating about one of the most important things in this world, which is your money. And if you can get on the same page with that, you can do a lot together as a couple. Yeah, I like harmony. I like happier. Those are those are all really good words when it comes to marriage. There's <laughs> there's been times uh, where, where I felt maybe a little bit more selfish uh, or things like that, and yeah. you know uh, that that comes into my my mind. Well, you know, I worked hard for this. I, I want to use it the, my way. Yeah, and that that only lasts so long where it feels like a partnership anymore. It feels like we're on this mission together. Yeah, and I quickly want to go back to that our uh, uh, us. You know my mindset yeah. because that that helps us to have that harmony that that happiness in Absolutely. our relationship. So you and Sam are, are an absolute great example there. Talk, talk to us about when you paid this off and did you guys celebrate? What was different in your life? <laughs> we did celebrate. Uh, it was right around the fall. And I remember we came down to what was then Financial Peace Plaza, which was, you know, where Ramsey headquarters was. And we came to do our debt-free scream. You know, you probably heard it on the Ramsey show. Everybody counts down three, two, one, we're debt-free. So we did that and uh, our family was there. And afterwards, Andy, it was Black Friday. And so I was like, okay, we're going 
on a shopping spree. Mom, you get what you want. My sister, you get what you want. Of course, Sam and I, we had such a good time. And it was one of those times that, you know, we had a certain budgeted amount, but we, we made it pretty high so that we could just enjoy and not think about it. And that was, I mean, that made the sacrifice totally worth it. You know, because over the past seven and a half years, it was saying no to new jeans and no to a new pair of shoes and, and just no to those everyday kind of basic things. And it was so cool to, to have that day where it's like, I like that purse. I'm going to buy it. Let's go out to lunch. I am not going to look at the price first. I'm just going to pick what I want on the menu. So that was just a really fun time. That's incredible. Now, is it is it surreal for you now working for for Dave Ramsey and, <laughs> and his awesome company? Now, go, having gone through this experience, do you think that now that you're in the shoes of educating uh, people on this topic that you are, I guess, more excited about it because you have gone through this. Well, yeah, you know, when Sam and I were going through this, I had no idea what was on the other side, right? You're just doing this, trying to make your life better for your family. I don't want to say self-focused or selfish, but it's very self-focused. You want a, a better life for your family and there's nothing wrong with that. As more and more people started discovering our story, I started realizing like, hey, this wasn't just for us. Like this is, other people can learn from this and every, other people can be inspired by this. And I think that's just the life lesson that I've taken away from this is whenever there's something that you're struggling through, wherever there's something that is a pain point for you and you've overcome that, it's probably not just for you for you. It's probably for you to take that, share it. Other people are going to learn from it. Other people are going to be able to grow from it. And I just think that's one of the great things about life is how, you know, you can take these struggles and your bad break can turn into your big break. I think it's great. I completely agree with you. I think a lot of people like to dog social media or the internet or whatever, <laughs> the news in general, but I think you can be the positive news. Yes. You can be the good stories out there. And Jade, you are, you're sharing that with us right now. Talk to us about what does it mean to not have $460,000 of debt in your life? And what does that mean for your future now? Oh, it means everything. You know, when you are, you've probably heard Dave Ramsey say this a million times, your biggest wealth building tool is your income. And when you're giving that away month after month and payment upon payment, you can't build wealth. You don't have the margin left to, to really give towards uh, your retirement or just building wealth. And so now that our income is totally freed up, it's great. I mean, it's allowed us, we were able to save for a down payment and purchase our first home with peace, you know, not overspending and not getting caught up in the craziness of 2020, right? We just were able to purchase that in a peaceful way. We were able to buy another, yet another vehicle in cash because we had the margin to save up. And, uh, you know, as the baby steps go, we're investing 15% into our retirement. And that's really fun to watch. So this is this is what I call the good part, Andy. <laughs> the first Absolutely. few baby steps are about, you know, that intensity. And it's just like, oh, I got to go. I got to go. But then once you get out of that, it's just like wide open space and you get to breathe and you feel that ease of financial peace. And so that's what I hope that people take from this, that they can go from that angst of payments and debt just to that ease of financial peace. That's incredible. Yeah, well, there's somebody listening right now, and they see that you've paid off six figures of, of debt, and they're also dealing with a mountain of debt. Maybe this is credit cards. Maybe this is student loans, and they are just feeling paralyzed. What is one step they can take following this interview to move forward? Yeah, I would say the first step to take is if you're not on a budget, you need to get on a budget. So many people are afraid to really take their money and break it down and see what you're spending, how much you have left at the end of the month. Do you have any money left at the end of the month? And instead of doing a budget, they just rely on credit cards to kind of fill that gap. And so I would say the first step is really get on a budget and just start telling your money where to go instead of wondering where it went. I say all the time, budgets are like toothbrushes. Everybody needs one, right? Without a toothbrush, things get crazy and nasty real quick. And it's the <laughs> same thing with a budget, you know? And I think that in our society and maybe growing up, budget becomes kind of that bad word, but it's a good thing. You just need to remember it's something that you have control over. It's something that it defines your money. It does not confine your money, so... I love that. Uh, financial hygiene, right? Yes, Jade? financial hygiene. I love that, Andy. I'm writing that down. <laughs> That's yours. That's yours. You, you, take, you take it. I love it. No, I mean, it's a good example. Like some of these things we got to do every day yes. in order to have a good life. Phys physical health, financial health, right. mental health. 
You got to do the little things. And yeah, they don't take a long time, but man, are they important. And they give you those epiphanies to help you move forward and tackle these gigantic goals like Jade and Sam did. Jade, thank you so much for your time today. I love watching you, listening to you on Ramsey. Tell people where they can connect with you and learn more from you on your new journey. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you can find me on all the socials at Jade Warshaw. It's just my name. And of course, please find us at RamseySolutions.com if you need resources, if you need help. Everything that you could ever need is on that site. So RamseySolutions.com or follow me at Jade Warshaw. Thank you, Andy. Absolutely. And get ready to learn about all things, not just financial uh, intelligence and, and, and financial hygiene. You, you want to learn how to uh, like cook better food in your house. <laughs> you want to learn how to enjoy music. Like Jade's got it all. That's Follow right. her, connect with her. Jade, thank you so much for your time today. I, I really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank you for having me. Have a great day.